Welcome to the National Christian Homeschool Championships Varsity Girls Division 1, 2, and 3 Selection Show. We are incredibly excited about this year's national championships. I'm Rob Flatt, and I've got Jeremy Caldwell, whose email address is at the bottom of this slide. Jeremy, I am excited about this year's national championships. Before we get too deep into it, let's just cover Team USA and how that works, because we've got a few Team USAs in the varsity girls age group. Uh, team USA cannot eliminate a team from trophy contention, whether that's gold, silver, or bronze ball. That's also copper bracket. And that is the, um, the team can't be eliminated from Division One as well from um, by a Team USA. So regardless of what happens in the first game or even possibly the second game, Team USA is going to move left no matter what. And because we're not dealing with pools right now in the opening rounds, it's, it's not as relevant here. Um, but we do have pools um, in Division Three, or we have a pool that we'll be playing in Division Three. We'll talk about that a little bit more. So as we kind of move into the actual format breakdown, let's just make sure everyone understands how this format is going to work. Um, this Over the summer, there was a vote by the varsity girls coaches to go to a 32-team format. We're very excited to be executing what we, we were asked to do by the coaches. Um, it's probably not the format we would have chose just because the way the breakdown is, but we're actually, the more we worked with the parameters that we were given by the coaches this off season, the more we were grateful for it because we think that we've come up with an incredible format um, and it's going to bring in a lot of different options and varieties and flavor. And so the first thing you need to understand about this format is there's four division one gold balls, four division one silver balls. There's two division two gold balls and two division two silver balls. And there's one, Gold ball and silver ball for division three. Each of these three divisions will also have a bronze ball winner. There is no reseeding that will take place in this process. And we will try our best to cover all the teams and where they're going to actually be um, throughout this um, and where they're advancing to. One of the unique aspects of this format is that there will be eight division three playing games. And what this is going to mean is that eight teams that actually lose are going to be in division three and the eight teams that win are going to move into the division one division two playing games. All right. And so what that means is if you win your playing game in the division three playing game, you will actually be taking on one of the number one or number two seeds of the tournament in division, in the division one and division two play in game. The top six, there are the top 24 seeds have been seeded automatically in the Division I, Division II playing games. And the next 16 seeds, so 25 through 40, have been seeded into the Division III playing games. The eight teams that lose, they're in D3. They will play four games. We mentioned a pool earlier. They will be playing in pool a pool. They will then also play out into a gold ball championship game and a bronze ball game as well. Monday. Also, we will have 16 Division I playing games. So we will have Division Three that's being set. And at the same time, we will have some Division I and II playing games taking place in classes 8A, 7A, 6A, and 5A. And then once the Division Three is all set, then the final of the final of those 16 games will be played. And what will happen is we'll have 16 winners that will make it to the National Sweet 16. They'll also make it to their gold ball class semifinals, 8A, 7A, 6A, or 5A. The 16 teams that lose in that game on Monday in the Division I, Division II playing games, they will end up in Division II. And remember, we have two gold balls for Division II teams, so those teams are going to move into one of eight or one of two eight-team gold ball brackets that will begin on Tuesday. And we'll cover that a little bit more but now kind of for some of the fun stuff. We've, we've covered some of the stuff that's not quite as interesting. Jeremy, let's talk about the seven and eight seeds and the nine and 10 in the sense of how this is going to work. Yeah, and these, uh, these teams are listed in alphabetical order right now. So the uh, seven and eight seeds you'll see on the left. It's, uh, we've got a good mixture of uh, different states. Here you got Kentucky, Bluegrass Blazers, the Chase Conquerors out of Michigan, Eagle High Seagulls out of Arkansas. You got Flathead Valley Crusaders out of Montana, 
Marion Hawks from Ohio, the Swisher Saints from Wisconsin, Victoria Cobras from Texas, and the Wichita Defender. I mean, from Victoria Cobra from Texas and the Wichita Defender from Kansas. <clears throat> and then United 10 Seeds, uh, CHA Flames out of Louisiana, the Cash Eagle from Indiana, Casey East Lions out of Missouri, Little Rock Flames from Arkansas. Manhattan Chief Thunder from Kansas, New Way Eagles out of Texas, OKC Knights out of Oklahoma, and one Team USA. So as you can see, just by looking through that list, there is a uh, a, a good list of different states that are being represented in the uh, the girls 18U. Yeah, so, and we we have a great list of 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 states i believe 16 states are going to be represented in varsity girls this year and 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 so we'll cover that a little bit but you're right these there's some great flavor here and so these are the teams we're we're saying meet the teams who will be in the division 3 playing game the winners of will move to a division 1/2 playing game the losing teams will become your d3 and so these are the teams that are being that are going to be playing for these spots really excited about this format because it really gives an opportunity for some of these teams to to earn their way into division one, two, and then some of these teams to earn their way into division three. And so that that's that's phenomenal. Um, we've already kind of covered this this first part of the slide here where we've talked about the four goal balls in D1, four, two goal balls in D2, one goal ball in D3, and every goal ball is always accompanied with a silver ball. And then each of these divisions having bronze ball winners, and there's not going to be any reseeding going on at all for any age groups or any teams this year at nationals, but especially this girls 18 and under age group. Um, Tuesday is, uh, of all the Tuesdays that we have, this format brings us probably the wordiest explanation for how it's going to play out. So I'm going to go ahead and um, attempt to tackle that. Uh, division one goal ball semifinals and division two goal ball quarterfinals will be played on Tuesday. Eight teams from each of these two divisions will end up remaining alive for a gold ball. Um, and, and so we're, we're really excited. We think that's phenomenal. The teams in Division Two are going we're going to have eight teams alive, and then we're going to have eight teams still alive in Division I. Um, we're, we're thrilled to announce that all eight of the National Sweet 16 games in Division I will be played on the NC on an NCHBC live stream and feature court complete with broadcasters. Um, I know that last year that was kind of a foregone conclusion. This year we were looking at potentially only having one court for some of the day or for the early in the week. And if that had happened, we would have had to make some tough decisions. So we're actually really thrilled to be able to announce that Tuesday, um, all the girls 18 and under um, sweet 16 games will be covered. And every game after that for the varsity girls winners bracket, as there as long as you're winning, you're going to be on the live stream broadcast court. And um, Thursday and Friday, that's only Drury, so that's that gives you an idea of where you're going to be playing. And then Ozark High School is our secondary um, live stream feature court, and we're really excited about that. Not on this slide, we are going to open up some opportunities, hopefully, for varsity girls to, um, teams to be able to select four of the Sweet 16. Uh, matchups, um, you know, it, I was going to say in the fan poll, but we won't actually know who some of those teams are because they're going to have to win some games. So that might make it a little bit difficult. So we'll just have to plan that by year and see how that goes. Um, it may not be as much um, of the fan selection as much as it may be broadcast um, team making the selections for which games to put on to which courts. Um the eight winning teams on Tuesday in Division One are going to move to the goal ball games on Wednesday, which will also be featured on the live stream broadcast with complete with broadcasters. And the eight teams that lose the Division One goal ball games are going to move to a eight team bronze ball bracket for Division One that will be played out first through eight, and will start on Wednesday and end on Friday with everyone playing three games and everyone playing a game a day. The eight teams that win their Division II quarterfinal games will advance to Wednesday's Division II goal ball semifinals, and the eight teams that lose in Division II will move to the copper bracket. It will be played out first through eight, Wednesday through Friday. Jeremy, I'm kicking it to you now because these are the top three seeds in division in all of girls' varsity basketball. Yeah, so as you can see by looking at this, there's going to be four different uh, – brackets to go through so 
we're going to show you the four number ones, the four number twos, and the four number threes. Uh, the three regional champions there with the HEA Firebirds out of the Midwest, Lincoln Eagles out of the Heartland, and the San Marcos Panthers out of the Big South, which are also the returning champs from last year. And uh, they're looking to try to repeat their self. And then you're going to have the West Michigan Hornets, who finished runner-up out of the Midwest, is uh, coming in as the fourth number one seed. Yep. The two seeds are going to be your Chisholm Knights, which are runner-ups to San Marcos out of the Big South, the Dallas Thunder, who finished third out of the Big South, and the Northside Lions, who finished fourth out of the Midwest, and along with your Rush, Springfield, hometown Rush, Missouri, uh they come in second in the heartland and uh looking through this rob <clears throat> i've noticed that the springfield rush uh boys and girls are both in division one mm -hmm. the uh west michigan hornets are both division one hea firebirds are both division one boys and girls tyler heat nope. boys and girls both division one so north side lions Northside Lions, you can, you can see the programs that are uh, going to be well represented and knowing that they're going to be on the uh, the feature courts potentially, that uh, that could make some, some potential large fan bases camping out there uh, and showing showing support for their teams. And then the three seeds, you got the Aggieland Panthers out of the Big South, Fort Bend out of the Big South, Tulsa Chef Arrows out of the Heartland, and the Tyler Heat from the Big South. So uh, just looking at this quick rundown, you know, you got six Big South teams in the uh, top three seeds in all these brackets. So the Big South was really deep this year, uh, really competitive, top to bottom. Uh, San Marcos, you know, come away with the win there. But it was a very tightly contested game against Chisholm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if, if if you catch me yawning at any point, it is not at the content of what we're covering. It's we're pushing one a.m. here as we're we're working on these uh, these live these broadcasts um, to be able to be ready these these selection shows for the um, actually today. So we're we're trying to get these yeah. all taken care of. This is exciting stuff. Um, so if, if you see me see me yawn or see Jeremy on it. It's not out of boredom at all. We've, we're actually incredibly excited about all this. Um, and so these are the teams here. We've just broke down the ones to the threes and the four through the sixes. I'll break those down. These are the other teams that have already, they're exclusively going to be in the division one, division two playing games. So they, these are the teams that will not be in playing in the division three uh, in the four through six seeds. You start, I mean, you start to see the depth here, you know, aspire trailblazers, a first year organization out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, Chap Chariots, Lansing, Michigan, Cincinnati Trailblazers, Dallas Dash Spartans, EVAC. Um, it has consistently done well um, in different divisions out of the Mesa, Arizona area. Marion Hawks, Memphis MHEA Eagles, um, who last year, I believe, made it to the National Final Four. Um, the Oklahoma Flame, first year program out of Tulsa, Oklahoma as well. The South Metro Huskies, the Texas Lions, a first year organization out of the Austin area, Fort Worth Thesa Riders, and the Wichita Warriors. And so we've, we've got a great list of teams there. Um, we're going to just keep moving on here. And, and, and this next step here is putting the teams in goal ball classes. So this, this is your first step. You want to know what is it going to take to make the national final four, to win a goal ball, to keep your hopes alive for an undisputed national title? Well, right here. Class 8A, San Marcos Panthers, Northside Lions. Class 7A, HEA Firebirds, Springfield Rush. Jeremy, can you break down 6A and 5A for us? Yeah, you got Class 6A, you got Lincoln Eagles out of Nebraska and the PHSM Knights out of Texas from the Big South who were runner-ups. And then Class 5A, you got West Michigan Hornets from the Midwest out of Michigan. And then you got Dallas Thunder out of Texas from the Big South. And you know, as you can remember, Dallas Thunder is only a couple of years removed from winning a national championship themselves, but I believe they went back to back as well. Yeah. So, uh, they, well, uh, they, 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 
one one and they were the number one ranked team in the nation to start the year and held that until San Marcos beat them at Big South, but they did not repeat. So So it's uh it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Uh you know, yeah, I you, you know you know you're in the format, so now you waiting to see which bracket you're gonna fall in, but now you know the one and two seeds you're gonna have to go through to uh, whichever bracket you get into to take home that gold ball? Well, you know, right off the bat, Class 6A, Lincoln Eagles, the North Texas District Champions, and CHSM, South Texas District, runner-up. Lincoln Eagles then went on to win the Heartland Regional, and CHSM runner-up only to um, San Marcos yet again, South Texas District, and the um, Big South Regional. I love that 5A. Yeah. You got Dallas Thunder um, and West Michigan Hornets. I know it wasn't even that long ago that um, that, that uh, athletic director Ryan Blackburn was reaching out to talk to Coach Andrea Kendall with Dallas Thunder um, to make sure that maybe they they had both had injured players. I think Miss Verduin was injured, um, and um, West Michigan had an injured player, and they both coordinated to allow both those injured players to get one moment for their final game at nationals. And I think that was possibly last year. Or it may have been two years ago. Sometimes we get into this stretch and I lose sense of uh, years, but I know it wasn't that long ago. Um, of course, HEA with Lily Williams, Michigan state signee or commit not, she's too young to be signing, um, but sophomore that has committed to the Michigan state university Spartans after receiving offers from every big 10 school, um, HEA, the national champion runner are up last year. And then, of course, the Rush out of Springfield, who Jeremy mentioned, they've, been, they've got some great players. Um, uh, I, I, I would, if I said one, I would have to say the other. There's two of them that are playing great, and I, I, my mind is um, losing it right now. So I'd rather not give a shout out to one and, and, and miss the other. Both are going to John Brown University. So that's really exciting. Um, you've got the Maravich Award winner in um, Santa Marcos and Maddie Herta. And as a returning Maravich Award winner, she's automatically a Sullivan Award winner. And that's something that last year we saw Miss Kendall, um, the 2023 Maravich Award, or 2022 Maravich Award winner. She was then the Sullivan Award winner. And, and that's phenomenal. That's for returning award winners. Um, players like Mariah Jefferson, Justin Jackson that have come through the system, they've all had a chance to win those awards. In fact, uh, players like Justin and uh, Mariah both have awards named after them because they won their awards either freshman year or sophomore year, depending on the players. And so uh, we have special awards for players that win it if they win it as a freshman or sophomore, and then awards for players that are returning as, as, as a senior. And so very excited about that format and, um, and those Robert, teams. Is that, is this the first time that we've had the, the boys and the girls, Maravich winners returning. I I feel like it wasn't that long ago that we had Justin Morgan returning and another player um, on the girls' side, but I I you know I could be wrong, and so I'm gonna go with it's very possible it is, and I'm gonna have to do some more research on that. Uh, but hate I hate to say it wrong, and, and then I know, I know uh, we've had. A boy, you know, win it and return. A girl win it and return. But I, I don't, I don't know if we've had both win it and both return. I think we had a special stretch where we may have had both Justin Jackson and Mariah Jefferson as return winners. Um, I think we may, and 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 we may have even had a year where we had a Maravich Award winner, and then a Jefferson Award winner, and possibly even a Sullivan Award winner that year. And so oh, we. And, and so we've had some years, and it really helps when you have players winning as freshmen coming back for right. consecutive years. And, of course, I'm not going to try to speak anyone into it, but with Lily Williams um, being as dominant as she is, if she were to win it, she would be in line for, um, I believe it would be the um, Jefferson Award. Um, and so that would be really neat um, to see a player. It's been a long time since we've had a player win it as a freshman or sophomore. So uh, very, very fascinating stuff. And um there's there's some great players out there that if their teams have success, it will really help them be in a position to be able to win the Maravich because the Maravich award is an overall individual award, but it also has some, it does impact 
a team that doesn't make it to a goal ball game isn't going to have a Maravich Award winner, even if they're the best player in the tournament. That's just it, some of these awards are a combination of team and player. So, right. all right, let's let's break down Wednesday through Friday because this is really important um, for the format. And again, some of this is really natural for teams. They're going to be like, this is what we're used to. And a couple, and some of these situations are a little bit more unique. So Wednesday division one goal ball games will be played um, on the NCHBC live stream. As I said, if you, if you're winning, once you get onto that sweet 16, there'll be live stream games all day. Now, Monday, there will not be any live stream games, um, but uh, for, for this, for these age groups here, but uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the Varsity Girls, Sweet 16, Elite 8, Final Four, um, and uh, National Finals. So every single one of those games is going to be covered, and we are incredibly thrilled. And Jeremy, they're fortunate enough they'll have you at least once, if not multiple times, along with Paul Gilmore. Uh, we've got a great cast. Jesse um, and Thomas Sanders are both coming back out. We've got Cody Hirons. We've got uh, Ty Cease, an alumni. Um, from the Indy Wildcats last year, um, CJ Pomeroy, um, and I could keep Scott going. Staten. Scott Staten is always fantastic, former varsity girls coach um, with the um, Indianapolis Trailblazers. So we've, we've got some great, we've even reached out to some coach Kendall with the Dallas Thunder as soon as we heard that she was retiring. Um, she uh, did respond back and let us know she would pray about it in March. And um, so we're, we're hoping that uh, one of these years we can have, have uh, coach Kendall or, or another girls coach that they end up stepping away. Let us know if you're interested in coming back for a broadcast, we'd love to continue to expand our broadcast team. All right. So if you win on Wednesday, you're moving to Thursdays. Um, if you win division one go ball on Wednesday, you're moving to the final four. You're going to be on Drury live stream broadcast court. It's going to be great. If you are one of the four teams that lost on Wednesday in the Division One goal ball game, you have earned a silver ball and you'll be playing in the Silver Ball Showdown Series semifinal. From there, we'll break down how that's going to happen in our next slide. But there is a Silver Ball Showdown Series banner for the winner. That will be played out first through fourth, Thursday and Friday. The Division Two semifinal winners will advance to the goal ball games while the four losing teams will move to a Division II bronze ball semifinal bracket that will be played out first through fourth, Wednesday through or Thursday and Friday. And the reason we mention that is we always get new teams that come in. How many games do we play? When do we go home? You go home after your last game on Friday, and you're going to play one game per day across the board. And that's the goal. And, and so we, we make sure to try to break this down so it's just everyone understands. Um, and over the years, we've, we've managed it. I think we've only had one time a team left and said they didn't know they had a game in it. And uh, we've done our best to communicate ever since then that, so that that doesn't happen. Thursday and Friday, Division One Gold Ball Showdown Series is played at Drury. The winners of Thursday's Division One National Final Four games will stay at Drury for Friday. They aren't going to play again that day. They're done for that day, but they'll stay at Drury on Friday and play in the NCHBC live stream broadcast. The Division II goal ball games and National four, Final Four games will be on Drury as well. So that's very exciting for the Division II teams. Um, I do want to make a, a fairly large announcement. It's not on here, um, but we are in the works of finalizing this. But it does appear that just based on the way that the schedule works out, that we are going to have the varsity girls at the 7.30 p.m. game time. Um, and that is the last game um, of the national championships. And immediately following that game, we will end up having the three-point shooting finals, the slam dunk shooting, uh, the slam dunk finals, the boys and girls all-American games for high school teams, and then we'll also have the senior send-off. Um, so the varsity girls teams that are in that national finals, they're going to have the best view of the entire thing um, for the grand finale, and we're really excited about that. Um, if we get put on the spot on why that's happening, the bottom line is that varsity boys teams are all scheduled in that last time block and uh, the last several time blocks on Friday. And the way it sets up, if we do the varsity girls game as the game before the varsity boys game, they'll be playing around the same time about 20 to 40 other varsity boys teams will be playing, which means there's a chance that one of these teams will have their varsity boys won't be able to watch them play in their championship game. And so we've made the move 
so that they'll be playing at 7.30 where there will only be a handful, four to five other games going on so that we should feel like we might be able to accommodate if there's a, t- a situation where there's a team playing the varsity girls championship game and their fans want to be able to support it. Um, it, it would have been impossible to do if we left it the other way. Uh, additionally, we are quite convinced that we're going to have some great games and some great players in that varsity girls championship game. And so we're, we feel like that's a, a worthy game to end nationals on that said, let's keep this moving. Jeremy, we break it down real quick for us. The gold and silver ball advancements. Again, no reseed. Yeah, your uh, class 8A go ball winner is going to be matched up against your class 5A go ball winner. And your class 7A go ball winner will be matched up against your 6A go ball winner. And the same will go against your silver ball. Your class 5A silver ball winner will be matched up against your 8A silver ball winner. Class 6A silver ball winner will be matched up against your 7A silver ball winner. So like you said, there's no reseed. The advancements are will be noted on the brackets. So this will be your advancements. If you win your class, whatever class you're in, you're going to know which class you play. Right. So, um, yeah, ab- absolutely. I think that's phenomenal breakdown there. And th- that way people can understand who who's playing who. And we didn't break this down, but class 8A is the number one overall seed, 7A, number two overall seed, 6A, number three overall seed, and 5A, the number four overall seed. And um, and, and so that's that's why that breakdown is, is that way. Um, we're going to keep on moving here. Jeremy, why don't you go ahead and talk to us just a little bit about these breakdowns. Yeah, so now you're going to be looking at, we showed you the one and two seeds earlier. Now you're going to get a look at the threes and the fours. So the Tyler Heat and Oklahoma Flame are going to be in the San Marcos Northside Lions bracket. And, uh, you know, just so you know, you've done brackets before, the twos and threes will not play the ones and fours unless it's for the championship. They both have to make it all the way through. So that would be your third game of the day, <clears throat> probably on Wednesday, to make it that far. So those of you who see this, are like, oh, man, we got to play San Marcos. Well, if you do, it's going to have to be for a gold ball. <clears throat> Same way with uh, 7A, with HEA. You know, you're going to have to play Lily Williams at some point in the tournament. If you want to win a gold ball or win the undisputed, you're going to have to go through them. So Aggieland and MHEA has been uh, brought into the 7A bracket to go against Rush and HEA Firebirds. Then the 6A, the Tulsa Chef Arrows and the Texas Lions will have to compete with the CHSM Knights out of Texas with the Lincoln Eagles. And in the uh, Class 5A, you got the Cincinnati Trailblazers and Fort Bend Eagles are going to have to go through Dallas Thunder and West Michigan Hornets. Yeah, I, I, you know, when I, I looked at the top two, I thought it's not easy to win a gold ball. And as you fill it out even more, it just it that it just reiterated it is not easy to win a gold ball. Um, these are the teams, these top seeds, these are the favorites to make Division One. Now, there's obviously a reason we play the games. And that and so just because these are the favorites does not necessarily mean this is who's going to be in Division One. But these are the teams that are, are favored to make Division One. Um, you've got some, definitely got some unique situations here. Um, Lincoln Eagles and Texas Lions. We mentioned Lincoln Eagles won the North Texas district and they won the Heartland regional, but in route to that tech to that, it was a very unique format out there in North Texas. Um, I think we had five teams in that top division and Lincoln actually played the Texas Lions twice and split with them. And so that's this, this is a unique situation where you have a team in a pool uh, or in a in a bracket where they actually have played each other twice in an NCHC postseason event. Uh, that's that usually doesn't happen, but in this particular case, we've got two. The four seed actually has a it has a split record with Lincoln. In Lincoln's case, they've they've um they they've got a win and a loss against Texas Lions. So that's not an easy four seed there. But I mean, when you look at MHEA, that's a team that was in the final four last year. So you got two final four teams in Class Seven A. Again, uh, you've got West Michigan and Cincinnati Trailblazers, and last year Cincinnati Trailblazers made the Final Four. Um, so it, it's it's definitely Fort Bend was a was a team that um, made it to the top eight last year. 
Um, and Dallas Thunder, as you mentioned, was the 2022 um, national champion, undisputed national champion. And then, of course, eight A is no joke. Um, when you have the the undisputed national champion in San Marcos, that's going to be tough. I mean, Tyler, he is, have just been consistent in the both boys and girls varsity. Um, Coach Thomas has done a great job out there. And um, the Oklahoma Flame first year organization. Um, but varsity girls, it's it just it's it's one of those deals where you look at this these fields and realize there's parity. There's going to be some great games in that Sweet 16. If these teams are the teams that are represented in the Sweet 16, these these games on the broadcast are going to be phenomenal. If these teams are not and some teams pull off upsets, that's going to be even better. So we're going to keep on moving here and just break it down. If you're looking for brackets, don't worry. You're not alone. But Friday, March 8th, we will release brackets. Opening game times are releasing March 9th or March 4th today. So at this point, if you're watching this, we should have already released the early start times and opening game times for your age group for Monday. And, and that will help teams be able to begin to plan. Um, we mentioned in here, the 18U boys are going to be playing all day throughout the day, AM and PM. It doesn't impact you, the girls teams as much, except for if you're trying to root them on. Just be prepared that they're going to be playing on Mondays, particularly Monday. They're going to have 8 a.m. start time and last start time is 9.15 p.m. They'll be playing wall-to-wall, -wall, 12 straight games on two different courts. And so that will be um, – might be, make it a little challenging to watch the games um, as fans. Please bear with us. But Wednesday through Friday, we hope to have very little competing with the boys' 18 and under games. And we mentioned that because we know that that's one of the biggest things we get – is if the boys 18 are playing at the same time as the girls 18, they can't root for each other. And so the 18 and under teams not competing so that they can actually root each other on is a very important aspect for us for this year's event. And the final most important part of the slide is to take a look at the 16 states and 40 teams that are represented. And so if you had a hard time following along, kind of how is this going to play out with the sevens and the tens, now we've made it a lot more simple. If you're a seven, eight, nine, or a 10, you now have your, you can actually take a quick look and see where you're at and who you're going to be playing and how that's going to work. Remember, if you're a seven through 10, you're playing a game just to get into division one, division two. If you lose that game, you will not have to play any of the top seeds. You will not have to play any of these teams that are any higher than seven. Um, if you win that first game, as a seven, you'll assume the seven or the eight seed, and then you will come in and you will play one of the, the top seeds of the tournament. If you lose that game, then you'll be in division two. And so these division two, three type game seeds, you're going to have an opportunity to play into division three. If that, if you win, then you'll have an opportunity to play into division one. If you lose, then you'll be in D2. And so we're really excited about that. Um, Jeremy, you want to take a, a, you want to tell me which of these goal ball classes catches your eye the most? Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the uh, Class 6A. It's probably, uh, I would say, it's probably going to be the most competitive, top to bottom. You know, looking at the classes, of course, HEA is probably going to be favored in theirs with Lily Williams. Sam Marker is probably going to be heavily favored in theirs, being the defending champions and bringing everybody back. Uh, West Michigan Horners, Dallas Thunder, that 5A bracket should be pretty – you know, uh, equal as well. I think there's a lot of parity yeah. here. Although West Michigan has a little, uh, you know, they have, I think, split with HEA this year. Yep. At least uh, at least split with them, I believe. So West Michigan is no slouch to play with either. You know, Lincoln winning the regional, winning the North District. So these, uh, these four number one seeds are, are going to be tough to get through. And, uh, and it's going to be a battle. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you there. I, I I think 6A is very intriguing. I I think 5A catches my eye. I just I, I mentioned it. You've got that the, the West Michigan, Dallas Thunder, Fort Bend, Cincinnati. And you got Aspire in there. I think that Aspire Cincinnati game is going to be amazing. Um, Wichita Warriors who come in at, at large sometimes a little bit hard to seed. Um, so them versus Fort Bend could be a, a really intriguing game as well. 
Um, and so right off the bat, I feel like you've got some intriguing four fives and three sixes and in, and in, in, in not just there. I mean, Dash and Tulsa Chef and the three six there and 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 Texas Lions and Chap in the six A that you mentioned, I, I think are very intriguing as well. Right. Um, and 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 so I, I, you know, you when you're running into these these matchups, one of the ways we kind of try to look at it um, in, in this case, you can't look too far because you don't know, is it going to be a seven or the 10 or the eight or the nine? But a lot of times we try to look at those three sixes, those four fives. And if the pool, if it's a if it's a bracket that has eight teams only, we're going to look at that one eights and the two sevens. In this case, it's a little bit deeper. So we absolutely did try to make sure that we weren't putting teams in a spot where if they won their playing game, then right off the bat, they're playing a team they've played three or four times already. Right. Um, and, and so I, I feel like we've done a good job, but as much as we've, we've tried, we're, we've seated by the end of um, this week, we'll have seated 1230 plus teams over the course of, I think about six weeks. Um, and so as much as we try, um, we're not afraid to admit that, we're going to miss something. We're going to make a mistake here or there. Um, but we're really excited about where we're headed, um, which is Springfield, Missouri, March 11th through 15th. And we're really excited about all of these varsity girls games. We're, we cannot wait to get the broadcast courts to cover these sweet 16 games. I think there will be some very competitive games there. There may be some not so competitive games there, but I do think that as the cream rises, we're just going to see the potentially the most competitive varsity girls national championships in recent history, if not ever. And I think anytime that's the case and anytime there's potential for that, it does lead to excitement. And it really was not an accident um, that we, when we evaluated this field that we felt like that varsity girls team um, age group could hold down that final game time of the national tournament and be the marquee time. Um, no shot at the varsity boys uh, teams and the, the, that are around. We think those are going to be great as well. Um, and when it came down to it, we really did want to make a decision that was the best for the fans. And we felt like that would be the best get situation for the fans, potentially of the teams in the finals. But also we think that it's hard to, hard to pick a clear runaway favorite, despite having a, a, a defending undisputed national champion, um, giving San Marcos plenty of bullets in board material. Uh, something we've been known to do. Uh, but the bottom line is that this year does feel like it has a lot of teams that are very capable of making a run to the national final four. And while there maybe isn't as deep of a field as far as how many teams can actually win the undisputed title, I think sometimes half the fun is the road to the final four and getting to that, that national finals. And like you mentioned, I think West Michigan and HEA are two and two on the year. You have CHSM and San Marcos who have played each other in some great games. We mentioned the Lincoln and Texas Lions split. There's just a lot of parity, a lot of excitement, um, yeah. and we can't wait to see everyone. Yeah, I'm not uh, not expecting too many blowouts in these games. There's, there's probably going to be a lot of close games, and got to come prepared. Uh, get your rest this week, because a week from today, we're going to be watching games going on, and be some high impact basketball. It, it's going to get going very quickly in Springfield. I do think that we could have some blowouts in those are in a couple early round games, but I think by the time we get to Tuesday and some of those games that are, are the closely matched up games and even Wednesday, I, I think that it's, we're going to see things tighten up. And I think we could see some of the best basketball we've ever seen. Um, and that's always exciting when you have the best teams in the nation. That's what you play for. That's right. We'll see you next week. All right. Thanks for joining us.